time, a figure we constantly run from, something we run alongside, something we run behind. Time has a funny way of doing that. While it marches on, our perception of time dances around that very notion. It's elastic. It can stretch out forever during an embarrassing moment at school and shrink on, say, your wedding day. And in a peculiar way, you can revisit time in your memories. And one memory involves a Major League Baseball player, how I made him sad, and the time that elapsed thereafter. And that player's name is Lonnie Chisenhall. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm a very sad man, and to help, I watch baseball. Okay, I haven't done this in a while. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Let's start with his name. Lonnie is the only player in MLB history named Lonnie Chisholm. Fun to say, fun to type, fun to read. S tier name. He grew up in my hometown of Newport, North Carolina. He and I crossed paths a few times in high school. And from what I remember, he was personable and kind. Good sense of humor. He was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates in the 11th round of his senior year in high school, declined to sign, and a few years later he was drafted in the first round by Cleveland, out of college. He was instantly their top prospect, and hit his way to the big leagues in 2013. Everything was looking up for Lonnie Chisenhall. Shh, don't say anything. His first few years were a bit disappointing. He didn't quite meet the high expectations of the team. Injuries and slumps plagued him, and after two years, he had to figure something out. In 2015, he started to make more contact and find some pop. The bat was coming around. But, again, he was injured. His replacement, began to absolutely rake. Do you remember who that might be? It was Giovanni Urshela. Lonnie's third base job was in jeopardy. When Lonnie returned from injury in late July of 2015, something amazing happened. Something that is hard to explain. And I even still have a hard time understanding what happened. Um, it's a once-in-a-lifetime moment, uh, a baseball miracle. Uh, when Lonnie returned from the injured list, he started in right field, and he quickly became the best right fielder in the American League. Check it out. With their newfound starting third baseman, they ran out of space for Lonnie, but they wanted to keep his left-handed bat, so they stuck him in right field. He then proceeded to rob hits at an astronomical rate. If we look at August and September of 2015, Lonnie played 50 games. During that time, he accumulated 6.8 UZR. Remember UZR from the Arenado video? That doesn't show up on leaderboards that year. But if we look at outfielders during those months, he was as good as Jason Hayward. He had the highest UZR per 150 rate amongst all outfielders. This was such a huge shift that Mark Simon of, at the time, ESPN, gave Lonnie his August Defensive Player of the Month award. He was no question the best defensive right fielder in the American League and was second best behind Jason Hayward in the majors. Hmm, how was he doing that? 
well. We do know how he was doing that. But you don't have to take my word for it. At BaseballSavant.com, you can see how well a player fared at certain vectors of the field. Remember when we talked about vectors in my Nolan video? We can see that in 2015 and 2016, he was providing immense values on balls hit in front of him, taking away doubles and singles like he did in this clip. I have to wonder if the fast twitch reflexes that he had at third base helped him on his first step. Now at Baseball Savant, we can also check out the outfield jump and burst speeds. The jump is the first second of movement after the ball hits the bat. And the burst is the movement speed thereafter. Lonnie had a consistently quick jump speed over his career, which certainly helped him in right field. So that's no surprise. This half season elongated Lonnie's career and it caught the attention of sabermetricians. Now I know, I know what the foolish simps are saying right now, small sample size. And well, you would be right. It was a small sample. Lonnie wasn't able to reproduce the results. So his jump speed stayed elite, but his overall speed and his root efficiency declined over time. He was at the very least an average right fielder in subsequent seasons, with about an average lefty bat. In fact, Lonnie was decidedly average. He comes in very close to the average of many statistical categories throughout the league. Lonnie was average. Aren't we all kind of average? Side note, this isn't even in my script. Like when you're at work, you're at school, when we talk about average, that means most people fall in that zone of average, right? Are you any less valuable? I mean, I don't think so. And that's the case I'm making in this video is that, you know, being average is actually kind of valuable on a major league team. What they're trying to do nowadays is fill out the roster to make sure that they don't have any sub-replacement players or sub-replacement value players. Uh, players that uh, don't provide the amount of war that they want. You've got 25 slots, you got to get as much war as you can out of all of them. I mean, that's the name of the game right now, right? So if you have someone that's detracting war or is below, below that 2.0 war, which is about average uh, for a regular major leaguer, um, you want to find someone who can fill that spot better, all right? And Lonnie's one of those people, right? That's what the Pirates saw in him when they were signing him. They wanted him to be a platoon lefty bat off the bench, you know, and provide that veteran leadership. That's valuable. Why do we degrade the notion of being average? Anyway, I don't even know if this is going in the video. As he tapered off his playing time, Cleveland began using him as a platoon piece, and he started seeing greater results actually. He had a higher batting average, his Wobo was higher, and his OPS were higher as well. And this was all a result of the shift to platooning. He saw less left-handed pitching, and began to focus primarily on hitting fastballs and spitting on the breaking pitches. There were signs that he was settling into a newfound role of being a platoon outfielder. Think of Jock Peterson with less strikeouts and less home runs. He had a memorable nine RBI game, which tied the franchise record for Cleveland. He hit a grand slam. And he started in one of the most memorable World Series I've ever seen. And with his first free agency contract, he signed with the Pirates. Uh, but he never played for them uh, due to his injuries. And then in 2020, Lonnie announced that he had retired. Let's bring it back a bit. So how did I make Lonnie sad?
I have no idea how Little League works today, but when I grew up there was a majors and a minors. Uh, the majors were more for the talented kids, and the minors were for like the younger and less talented. And when I turned 10, I was super psyched to finally get picked to a majors team. So this first year was very important to me because it was when I learned that life is unfair. Lonnie is also 10 years old. And he is also 10 times my size. He was taking 13-year-old's yard and was blazing fastballs past every poor little soul in the batter's box. Lonnie was obviously gifted and was performing several tiers above us. During one game, our team was facing off against Lonnie's team. He was absolutely dealing. No one could touch him. Punch out after punch out. He was pumping heat past our poor little arms. With each strikeout, the opposing team's parents would leap with joy and ring these annoying cowbells. A few innings pass and more strikeouts. We had no shot. In fact, we hadn't a single hit. Even further, only two balls were ever put into play over five innings. I don't remember the score, but I know that I was due up third and it was the bottom of the sixth inning. One of the things that I hated the most, <laughs> even at that young age, was being the last out of the game. And uh, doing the math, I knew that that was gonna happen. And I was totally anxious about it. So Lonnie buzzes through the first two batters and up I stroll, ready to get my ass chapped. I was so nervous. Stepping in, I knew I couldn't keep up with his heater, so I had to shorten my swing. Uh, the first pitch comes in, and it's shoulder height, and I swing right through it. I thought, if I was going to strike out, I was going to strike out swinging. And then the next pitch comes in. It's in the same place. Still, couldn't catch up. So now it's 0-2. I was about to be the last out, and the coaches knew it. The parents knew it. I knew it. And so did Lonnie. So he winds up, rears back, and... Oh my god, he threw an ephus. It was cutesy, brash, maybe a little arrogant to throw something like that as the last strike of your perfect game. I enjoyed throwing the ball, you know, the, the quick reads. Um, I can run a little bit. Uh, I'm, not, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fly or anything, but you know, it kind of fits your personality too. It's a, a more of a laid back position, um, and it just, you know, kind of, you know, salt me out. I closed my eyes and created as much torque as my little 10 year old body could muster. And I smacked the shit out of that ball. There went the perfect game. My team leapt for joy for some reason, and I was a hero. The next batter struck out. So was Lonnie sad? I like to think that he was. He was probably more embarrassed than anything. You know, he tried to humiliate me and I ended up turning the tables on him. I know that his dad, who was the coach, really chewed him out for doing that. Um, so he kind of learned his lesson there. We can look at Lonnie's career and see a reflection of how life can go. We have grand expectations and those can get shattered. And then maybe we get 20 seconds of success. And then we settle into our role in life. And that, there's nothing wrong with that. 
In fact, it's liberating and refreshing to accept this. You're gonna get old. Lonnie said he was retiring because he had kids now and he was tired of not being there. And add to the fact that he hadn't been on the field in a few years due to his injuries. It made sense. Lonnie, I hope retirement treats you well and I hope you enjoy your kids because time, it's marching on. Thanks for watching. Real quick, I wanted to ask you guys to do something for me. Uh, if you wouldn't mind looking in the description and looking at the link for a questionnaire that I've created, it's gonna be for the next video. Um, it would be helpful if you guys filled out the questionnaire as gonna be part of the data I'm compiling for the next video. Thanks guys.